taking them back because we wanted to be, again, modern and relevant. We wanted to keep that connection to our audience, young adults, as well as just about everybody who comes into McDonald's because customers were changing. The business was changing. America was changing. Culture was changing. People were using the McDonald's restaurant in a much different way, and we wanted to make sure that we were there for the 21st century. So the campaign has been very successful. It is in its ninth year. We don't plan on changing it anytime soon. Sorry, agencies who want to pitch new ideas, but I'm loving it. It's going strong. We're going to stay there for a while. Uh, the reason I talk about this is because the voice of the brand is going to be apparent in the way that some people may have seen it in the last 20 years and what we do online, because we do have a concertedly different point of view and tone of voice online than we do in our traditional advertising. So McDonald's in the digital world, we're getting there, but admittedly somewhat slowly. We're a bit of a dinosaur in that we're a bricks and mortar company. You can't just go online and order yourself a hot, fresh burger, fries, and drink and have it delivered to you instantaneously. So it took us a while to convince the company, as well as convince our very vocal and powerful franchisee body, that the return on investment for being online was something that was a good business decision. And so you can see that back in 2001, the percentage of our GRP spending was basically nil when it came to the digital space. We have grown dramatically, but we're still very much in a traditional GRP world when it comes to our media. Uh, as you heard Patrick say, TV's not going away anytime soon, or maybe it was, <laughs> uh, anyway, it, it, it is not going away anytime soon, and so we want to make sure that we stay in that space because that's where our consumers are. Uh, but the digital world is growing and we're changing the amount of time and effort that we've put into our marketing efforts there and the way that we talk to our customers when we're there. So one of the first things that we did was we updated the way that we looked on our website. I know this is a bit archaic, but again, when you're just tiptoeing into the digital world like a big company like McDonald's was, it took us a while to, to consider any innovations. The first thing we had to do was update our website, which was designed in-house, it was never really consumer focused, it wasn't user friendly, and ironically it didn't even look like a restaurant. It was more about lifestyle and information and it wasn't very user friendly. So just last year we totally reskinned the website, we hired an agency to do some beautiful work, the food is heroic, it's user friendly, especially when you want to get information like nutritional information on our food, which is one of the top reasons that people use our website. So again, we're starting to get into the 21st century in the way that we live in the digital space. So one of the first things that we aggressively did was start to use that McDonald's.com as a place where we house most of our promotional messages. So when we launched Real Fruit Smoothies, instead of just putting product information on our website, we put a promotional message on there so you can get a lot more detailed information than you can get from your traditional broadcast sources. We have a retail tactic on there. There's a digital coupon to get you to try the product. But we also have enhanced consumer engagement. So this was a spin art game where you got to go in and inspired by the fruit flavors of the real fruit smoothie, the consumer can go in there and make some beautiful art just like they were at the county fair, but totally controlled in the environment of your uh, digital workspace at home or at work. Not that anybody would ever do this while they're at work. But uh, you could make some beautiful art. You could share it on your Facebook page if you were really proud of what you did. You could save a JPEG and you could email it to friends. So it was just another way for us to spend more quality time with the consumer instead of just talking about fruit uh, to make sure that they were having fun with the brand and with the product. So since the theme of today's meeting is all about convergence, probably one of the best examples of what we have done recently is when we launched frozen strawberry lemonade this spring. So uh, a lot of you are probably familiar with the television commercial that aired then. Uh, if not, it'll sound familiar when you see some of the other media that we played into the digital space. But just probably two years ago, what we would have been more likely to do is just go on to the promotional page of McDonald's.com, put some you know, details about the product on there, maybe have a little bit of fun engagement, and done some traditional internet banner ads. But now, two years later, we really are going into a full integrated campaign online, not only just utilizing all the different uh, digital media, but as well as having creative continuity from what we're doing in the traditional media 
into the digital space. Sorry to interrupt, but I'm tired of being taken for granted. Do I look like a garnish? It's time you saw me in a new way. Like your new McCafe frozen strawberry lemonade. Sweet, tangy, and cool. Like me. There it is. Our official family portrait. Back when I was just a seedling, I didn't know what the world had in store for me. But I wasn't going to end up like my Uncle Maya. Zested into a tartlet? Nope, I had bigger cups to stir, and I wasn't going to stop until I was the coolest thing around. You recognize the voice. That's uh, Steve Sharippa from uh, The Sopranos. <coughs> Played Bobby Bakula uh, was the voice in there. So picked up from the TV and the radio and made it come to life in several different places. I've been told that I've got to speed up my presentation, so I stopped that presentation short, but it goes into detail about how there was creative continuity and a deeper experience about Strawberry Lemonade following that same creative platform in a multitude of different things. We had specific ads for Hulu, we had a different voice in Facebook, but a very integrated program. Uh, another innovation that we did last year with our Monopoly program is we were the first branded company to have an identity on Farmville on Facebook. When I heard McDonald's wanted to create their own farm on Farmville for a day, I thought the idea was crazier than running through the forest screaming hibernations for sissies. Nobody had ever created a branded farm on Farmville before, but McDonald's was bound and determined to be the first. And shoot, before I knew it, players were growing tomato and mustard seed crops and earning highfalutin virtual McCafe consumables, like coffee that allowed them to farm twice as fast. They even rewarded players that interacted with the McDonald's farm by giving them hot air balloons to fly. In fact, tens of thousands of balloons are still out there as a testament to how well the event went over. Pretty fancy if you ask this 8-bit farmer. Throughout the one-day event, McDonald's products and personality were highlighted with their finest ingredients, family atmosphere, and offered fun diversions like apple dipper fresh fruit stands, real fruit smoothie fruit markets, real fresh dairy barns, warm bun bakeries, and playful McCafe stops all along the way. Yep, and not only was McDonald's the first to brand a farm on Farmville, more than 12 million folks took part in the experience. Amazing, huh? Again, try to take advantage of being where our customers are and branching away from McDonald's.com. So I call it the section Beyond McDonald's.com because that was our consistent place for promotional messaging for several years. But we're really trying to branch out and be where our customers are. So we had a really strong innovation with Monopoly last year where in conjunction with Foursquare and Twitter and Facebook, we were able to come up with critical mass of where the most customers were playing Monopoly at McDonald's and that would be reflected in a map and you could see across the United States where most of our customers were enjoying the game and the McDonald's experience. And there was a mobile application that went along with that which was a big innovation for us at the time as well. Going back to the McDonald's brand and the voice of the brand, and how we speak to our customers online versus traditional media. Of course, you have the extended format, which is always great to tell a deeper story because the McDonald's brand has always been about telling stories. But it allows us to have a little bit more fun, be a little bit more targeted, be a little bit more off the wall. So we're never going to be as crazy as Burger King or maybe some of our other competitors that you know go a little bit off the deep end when they try to make that connection with, with young adults. But we have a little bit more fun than we would do in a traditional 30-second ad. So here's what we did for McRib. Its origins are unknown. Where it began, uncertain. Some say it's been here all along, existing among us, hiding in plain sight, just waiting for the exact moment to make itself known to the world. Others believe it was discovered and released from powerful forces that held its deliciousness captive away from its adoring public. But whether you believe it's the object of an international conspiracy to rule the world, or the ancient result of fire stolen from the Greek gods on high by one pork-loving titan, it is certain its saucy, tangy goodness can instill such a desire to have one that people will risk, maybe not life and limb, but a barbecue-stained shirt to have one. And it is why McDonald's legendary McRib 
is a sandwich unto itself with a legion of fans who have solidified their place in history along with it. And let it be known, no single legend can contain it. At participating McDonald's for a limited time. McRib is such a quirky product and it has such a cult following. This was just the perfect environment for us to do something a little bit off the wall. And uh, hot off the presses, I wanted to be able to put it in my presentation today, but it's not quite done. But McRib is coming back, and we have some really cool stuff online this year, taking advantage again of that cult following that the product has. So uh, the last piece I wanted to share with you is when we launched the McCafe line of espresso drinks back in 2009. Again, it's only two years ago, two and a half years ago, but really it, it represents a, a remarkable shift in the way that we talk to our customers at that time. And because the, uh, the, the, the professional coffee drinker, the aficionado out there, the one that just doesn't go get a dollar cup of Joe, they have a little bit different sensibility about that product. There's an emotional connection. There is a badge feeling when you walk around and you're drinking coffee from a Starbucks or a Caribou's or a Pete's or whatever. We really wanted to get into that mentality and a little bit of a quirkiness when we launched in the cafe. Lame. So how about that tea nut you like? You want to talk about that? LeMay. <laughs> Nothing in the world fully reflects the power of Mick Cafe more than a LeMay suit. Bold, rich, smooth. Cool. Am I talking about coffee or the sultry soul of LeMay? Could it be both? Ponder that and just see it to the next episode. So we had like eight episodes here. These were the comedy troupe from Second City in Chicago. Date. Last month, I uh, got a haircut, and the barber snipped my ear. Oh. Date. <laughs> Did you catch that? It was really subtle. So boldly subtle. Did you see the thing that the Mick Cafe did? It, it's like something's dull. And then Mick Cafe sharpens it until it cuts to the quick of humanity like a sword made of hope. Watch again. Oh. <laughs> again, so strange, but in a fun kind of way. And a lot of that stuff was done ad lib. Uh, it's spontaneous on the set and that's the fun kind of thing that you can do when you're in this environment and you have the creative freedom to do outside of what the traditional bounds are for the right way to connect to the customers. So uh, I want to thank MediaMind for having me. We've had a, uh, a long-standing relationship uh, with the, your partners at DG and we uh, look forward to continued partnership with MediaMind as well. And uh, I can take a few questions, but uh, also I'll be available at the break if you want to talk in person, too. So this gentleman has a question. Who did the creative on it? Uh, Tribal DDB. Find that. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Good. Thank you. Uh, are you enjoying it so far? Good, thank you very much. So we're going to have a break now, so you can go and get yourselves, it's a bit warm in here, so you need to get yourself a bit of freshened up, and go get some uh, drinks and things outside. You need to come back, we've got a great panel lined up, and sort of talking about where, where things are going today. There's some great guys flying in to sort of really challenge this in, and sort of try and open it obviously up to the floor to ask some questions as well. Uh, I've got some VPs over here who apparently have got some rather deep wallets or deep pockets and we need to exploit their wallets later on. So drinks will be served at the end of the day as well. So um, I'll certainly be pointing those out to you because they're going to be paying your checks.
So um, uh, you know, please go and enjoy yourself and come back in about 20 minutes and we'll carry on with the show. Thank you very much.